Greetings to you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Brother Martin Millett, and I'm in Bucharest, Romania, with Romania Mission, and this program is called Let the Bible Speak. We've been studying the book of Revelation together, and I've been studying about the seven churches that were in Asia, and as I was teaching you, uh, my son put the seven of them on a point where you could see each one of them in a diagram, and as soon as we did that, the earthquake hit here, and I think that was the day when six, the 6th of February. Then after that, several other earthquakes hit around here, and they still have some earthquakes going on down there. But you say, Brother Martin, is that showing us it's the end of the time? Well, I want to talk to you about that because for many years, uh, many of God's people are confused about trying to say when the Lord is coming. But he's got to do this before he comes or can he come right now? Some people say he can come at any time. And other people say, well, these things have to take place before he comes. You know, the word of God's got to go out to every nation. Well, I want to show you something that God gave me just the other day that cleared all that up to me. The coming of the Lord is coming in two stages, okay? And if you can get that straight, the book of Revelation will mean so much more to you be able to understand it. I know if after uh, that happened, I was looking at the news, and we had these spy balloons coming from China or somewhere and all those objects coming in. And then we started to hear the, heard the news about this uh, oil spill in uh, Palestine, uh, Ohio, and the tragedy that happened there, and all the, all, also uh, the things that were going on all over the world, things happening, and we just understand what's going on, man, as it's coming to that. I even wrote a, a message to a brother in Kansas and said, man, it looks like these things are coming to pass. The Lord's Rick's fixing to come any moment. But I was getting the book of Revelation mixed up with the rapture, you can't do that. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. So what I want to do is very quickly lay out uh, the book of Revelation to you in a diagram form that I hope you can understand. So I'll talk to you about this. In the beginning, the, remember when Jesus was resurrected, there was 40 days that he spent with his disciples, and it says he was seen by many infallible proofs. So we know that he died. He spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He came up and he was noticed and, and spoke to his disciples and fellowshiped with them. And many things happened in those 40 days. And then in Acts chapter 1, you remember when he ascended? I guess it's Acts chapter 2, where he ascended up and those two angels were standing there and say, told those men, these angels were dressed in white. They looked at him and said, why stand you up gazing up into heaven? said, this same Jesus shall come again in the like form. So he's coming back again. And the Bible tells us in Revelation, every eye shall see him and those that pierced him shall see him and all the earth shall mourn or well because of him. Now there's a difference between that and when the rapture takes place. So if you'll listen to me just for a moment, let me kind of lay it out to you. I think it'll make a lot more sense to you, okay? And the first part of the Revelation we have the church age after the Lord's ascension, and then he came Pentecost. You remember that? And then the Bible starts off in Revelation with Revelation 1, 2, and 3, talking about the church age. Uh, this is the age that we're in right now, the age of grace, but we're in the church age. And these seven books or seven uh, letters that Paul, I say Paul, that Jesus gave to John this to write down these were says that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God the Father gave unto him be given to his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ so this is the Lord Jesus' testimony and his desire is the church you and I would get ready and if you don't know the Lord you're not in the church that you would receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and get saved and get ready Things are happening. I heard just the other day or this morning, somebody told me here in the studio, said, Man, Brother Martin, did you hear about that big, uh, what they call the Grammy Award, where they're worshiping the devil? It took five minutes to worship the devil, and, and everybody in America was going crazy about it and everything, and a lot of people liked it, and it's a wonderful thing. Listen, when you people start doing that in the face of God, are you listening? You don't know what else is going to happen. Amen. I know there's a revival break that broke loose 
in a place in Kentucky, Ashbury, Kentucky, uh, with the college, Wesleyan College there. And they say that's the real deal. I don't know. I hope it is. I pray it is. That revival break out all over, even in Romania, that God's people would be a revived and would be a, a, a light in this world, amen, for the Lord Jesus, and win many people's people to Christ. But let me just give you how this, this line goes so you'll understand it, okay? So after the 40 days, the church is a church age. Then after the church age, in chapter 4, let me read this to you in chapter 3. And we're starting in verse 19 of chapter 3 of Revelation. This will be our text, okay? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This is the Lord talking to these seven churches. Two of them, he had nothing critical to say about them. The first church that you remember, the book, or, or the, the church that he spoke to, Sardis uh, or Smyrna. Smyrna, they had they were the suffering church. And then he spoke to the church of Philadelphia. They were evangelical church. And each one of these churches has a time in history that we'll study in just a little while or in our next lesson. But there was the church age. That's the church age we're in right now. So he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is the next verse that we use very often in verses 20. But it's out of context. We take it out of context. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Now, we use that because I'm an evangelist. I'm not a teacher, but I'm an evangelist. We use that verse of Scripture so many times to lead people to Christ. And it is true. You can use it in a practical application and talking about people's hearts. Behold, he's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. If you hear his voice, open the heart and say, Lord Jesus, come in. I receive you. I believe you. Here's my life. I give my life to you. I turn from my sins. I turn from my wickedness. And I turn to you, Lord. I want you. That's true repentance. Amen. But this, in this context, he's talking about Jesus standing outside the church, knocking on the church's door, his church, and saying, if you'll open the door, I will come into you and sup with you and you with me. And then he says in verses 21, this is so important. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my father's throne, even as I overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And as we study this, my prayer to our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, that it be so clear to me and you, we can understand. Because if you'll understand what he's saying and what he said to these seven churches, there's things in there that he wants us to learn, things that he wants us to correct us in, things he wants to uh, uh, say about us that are good, things that can... Uh, uh, commendations to us, but then there's some things that he wants to talk to us about correction, correct, getting straight in your life, amen? Like the first one, the church we studied the first time. You remember we studied about Ephesus? Their problem was they lost their first love. They left their first love. They didn't lose it. They just left it, walked off and left their first love, and you can't do that. Whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in the church, whether wherever you're at, you Remember when you first met the Lord, how wonderful it was. This is what he talks about. And if you'll learn those things, and I'll learn those things, and put them in my life, I'll be more than an overcomer. Amen? Now, the disciples had no idea what he's talking about there in his walk here on earth about the church. They were thinking he was coming then to set up his kingdom. But you remember even the uh, the sons of, uh, uh, what do they call them, the uh, Boanerges. Zebedee's sons. They're, they're, his wife tried to get Jesus to put James on one side and uh, John on the other for Jesus because they they were thinking he's coming back right now and set up his kingdom. Beloved of God, he's coming. He is coming. But there's some things in our lives that he wants us to learn. So now let's just look at this chart for a moment, okay? Focus with me on this chart. Okay, then we have the resurrection of the Lord. Then we have the 40 days he spent with his disciples. Jesus ascended to heaven, and then he sent the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit came after 10 days after his ascension. And then we have the church ages from Revelation 1 to 3. And then after that, the church is called up in the rapture, right? The church is out of here. 
I'm not a child of wrath. You said, Brother Martin, you mean you're a premillennialist? No, I'm a Bible believer, amen? And God does talk about the church not being under the wrath of God. I'm not a child of wrath. I was. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sin, were in them times past. We walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had a conversation some time past, and the lusts of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. But I'm not a child of wrath anymore. Jesus took all of our wrath upon him. If you're a child of God, beloved, Jesus has already taken your wrath. He's not going to pour his wrath out on you. Now, we may get caught in some of the, the mess that's going on with this, all this stuff that's happening right now with the, uh, the world, the government church. Uh, they call it a world uh, government summit they just had in Davos and all this crazy stuff that's going on, the World Economical Forum at Davos and all that crazy stuff that's going on. But who knows? You say, well, Brother Martin, when we did, what about this thing about the, we had this uh, COVID-19? So what? There was other things. That's nothing compared to when Jesus allows and opens those seven seals, amen, in the book of Revelation, which we're going to get to. But after the church goes up, there's a seven-year tribulation. That's between Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 18. And then at 19, Jesus is coming. That's his second coming. The first time he comes, he's coming in the air. That's for his church. And that's in John chapter 4, verse 1. That's what he says. John says, After this I looked up, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the voice which I heard was like as a voice of a trumpet uh, saying unto me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. Now that's the same thing he says in First. Thessalonians chapter 4, if you want to read that. It's Jesus calling the church up. Just like you remember before his wrath fell in Noah's day when the God sent the flood, he saved Noah, a man, a righteousness man. And it's the same way it is in today's time. He says, as it was in the days of Noah. Amen, beloved of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen, because he's coming. Now, I want to say one more thing to you, cover this chart. So after the seven-year tribulation, Jesus comes with the church this time. He's not taking us out. He's coming back with the church, and we're going to reign for a thousand years on this earth. It's called the millennial reign. And after the thousand years, and that's in, verses, that's in chapter 20 of Revelation. And then there'll be a lake of fire. You remember the great white throne judgment. That's going to be there. And then in chapter 21 through 22, he talks about the new heaven and the new earth. Well, throughout all eternity, we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth to reign and rule with Christ. And God bless your heart. I hope that will be a blessing to you. And we'll see you the next time. Amen. I never thought that true love could be knowing Lord Jesus Christ personally. 